So I think that the best way to get started with this topic is to do a challenging ethics question, something that you could totally see on USMLE or Comlex. And from there, I'll go into the explanation of the difference between consent and assent. And part of the reason why I think that practice questions are so useful when you're learning ethics is that if you've seen an ethical situation before, then you're going to remember it better than sort of just memorizing these broad and seemingly confusing topics. So let's dive right in. A 14-year-old female with end-stage malignant leukemia is meeting with an experimental research team. The lead investigator discusses with the patient's parents, who are her legal guardians, a clinical trial that is high risk but may offer a curative form of treatment. The risks include hepatic failure, blindness, cachexia, and hemorrhagic pleural effusion. Which of the following is required for the patient to participate in this clinical trial? A. Informed consent from the patient. B. Informed consent from the legal guardians. C. Informed assent from the patient. D. Informed assent from the legal guardians. E. Both A and D. Or F. Both B and C. So pause the video if you'd like to reread the question and read through these answers. But if you're ready, I'm going to tell you the answer. So the answer to this question is F, and that is both B and C. So you require both informed consent from the legal guardians and informed assent from the patient. So as we move through this lecture, I'm going to build on this slide, and this is the high yield bottom line, informed assent. So just like in the previous ethics video where we talked about informed consent, Informed assent is really the same exact thing. You still have to describe the procedure or the trial, the risks, the benefits, the alternatives, everything. But the difference is that assent has to be obtained from a minor because technically a minor, if they're not emancipated, cannot give informed consent. They can only give a f informed assent. So it's basically the same thing, but it's geared towards a minor. So this is typically somebody who's less than 18 years of age and who's not emancipated. And even though a minor can't legally give informed consent, they can certainly give informed assent. So this is a requirement for patients who are not old enough to give consent. And minors still have to give their informed assent to participate in anything that could be perceived as high risk. So I'm sure you can imagine a situation where you want to do something to a child, but you're not going to just do it to a child because the parents say to do it, right? You have to explain exactly what's going to happen to the child. And if they don't want it done, and it's something that's high risk, you have to get their informed assent. So this is a very, very important topic because ethically, there are so many different scenarios that the test writer could ask you about informed assent versus informed consent. So in this practice question, what, I'm, what I wrote this for is to let you know that when there's something really, really high risk, you need to get the informed assent of the minor. You have to explain exactly what's going to happen, the risks, benefits, alternatives, all that lovely stuff that we already talked about in the informed consent lecture. You have to get the assent from the minor and the informed consent from the legal guardians. So you can't proceed with something risky unless the legal guardians give the informed consent and the minor gives the informed assent. So very, very high yield. Please understand that distinction. So again, this is the high yield bottom line. We're going to build on this slide as we go throughout the lecture. So let's do another practice question, uh, which will give us more information about the informed assent process. So this is the same exact vignette, and the only thing that I'm changing is the last sent the last two sentences. So the legal guardian wants the patient to participate in the trial, but the patient does not want to participate. Which of the following is true? So same exact vignette. The only difference now is we're saying that the legal guardian, the patient's parents, they want to enroll their child, but the patient doesn't want to be enrolled. So which of the following is true? The patient should be enrolled in the trial. B, the patient should not be enrolled in the trial. C, the ethics committee should be consulted. D, the patient should be enrolled in the trial only if both parents agree. Or E, both A and D. Pause the video if you'd like some time to think about this. 
and now I'm going to tell you what the answer is. So the correct answer for this practice question is B, the patient should not be enrolled in the trial. So even though the parents who are the legal guardians have theoretically given their informed consent for the patient, you know, their child, the minor, to participate in the clinical trial, this question is hinting that the minor did not give informed assent. So even if the legal guardian gives informed consent, the minor didn't give informed assent and therefore the investigator cannot enroll the child in the trial. So as we build on this high yield bottom line, minors can opt out if they don't give assent and it's regardless of what the legal guardians want. So in the ideal world, you as the physician would try to figure out what, where the disagreement is coming from and see if you can fix that discrepancy. You know, a lot of times you might get a question that'll say something like, which of the following is the best course of action? And this is a question where the legal guardian and the minor don't agree. And the correct answer in that situation would probably be something along the lines of attempt to find out why the minor does not give informed assent or attempt to find out why the legal guardians are giving informed consent. So you're always going to try to figure it out first and be very neutral and understanding. That's a general theme in ethics. Let's move on and do another practice question to further build on this high yield bottom line. So once again, we've got the same clinical vignette and I'm just changing the last sentence here. It says, in order to ensure understanding on the part of the minor, how should the investigator direct the informed assent process? So basically this question is saying, how do you have to present the information to the patient based on what? A, the age of the patient. B, based on the IQ of the patient. C, based on the ethics committee's guideline for informed assent. D, based on the NIH's guideline for informed assent. E, based on the, Acad the American Academy of Pediatrics guideline for informed assent. So this is a tricky one that you probably don't know unless you've already studied this. Pause the video if you'd like to think about it. And if you're ready, here's the answer. So the answer here is A, you always base informed assent on the age of the patient. So in this case, we have a 14 year old female. So when you give inf you know, the information to the minor, you do it as if you're trying to give information to a 14 year old. So the description of the procedure, the risks, alternatives, benefits, et cetera, et cetera, all of that has to be geared to a 14 year old's understanding. Because after all, how could they give informed assent if you're describing it in scientific, complex medical terms that maybe only an adult would understand? Part of the the fine feature here in informed assent is that because you're explaining everything to a minor, you have to dumb it down a little bit, but still be sure to explain the description, risks, benefits, alternatives, all of that stuff that gets wrapped into the informed assent and consent process. So you always direct it toward the age of the patient, very, very high yield. So as we build on our bottom line here, here's what we have. Informed assent is a requirement for patients who are not old enough to give informed consent. They're typically minors who are not emancipated. These minors still need to give their informed assent to participate in anything that could be perceived as a high-risk procedure, trial, what have you. The minors can opt out if they don't give their informed assent, even if the legal guardian gives informed consent. An informed assent should be catered to the age of the patient to ensure their understanding. So that's everything that you should understand about informed assent, and I hope that this was helpful to you.